What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing another recap of my national homebrew competition results, uh, this time for 2023. So I entered the national homebrew competition last year in 2022 uh, for the first time ever and I actually hadn't done competitions before that point um, and I had a really really good experience. I learned a lot, I got a lot of really good feedback on my beers and I even got a bronze medal for one of them which was pretty cool. So if you want to watch that video go check it out, I'll link it up in the corner but otherwise today we're talking about 2020. So you guys had a lot of really good suggestions and feedback from that last year and one of the biggest ones actually was saving a beer in the exact same form that I packaged it for the National Homebrew Competition and also like storing it in the same way it would be stored at the competition and serving it in the same way it would be served at the competition which is pretty much guaranteed not to be cold. So this year instead of just reading the results and contemplating them, I'm actually going to taste the actual submitted beer uh, side by side with the results. That is gonna help me understand a lot more about what the judges are saying about the beer and will help me really frame their comments in a much better way, I think. But I will also be explaining a little bit more about how to get into this competition and how it works. If you wanna just go ahead and fast forward to the beer results, feel free, I've marked timestamps for everything down in the description. The National Homebrew Competition, though, is the world's largest beer competition. And just because it's the United States National Homebrew Competition doesn't mean that it is uh, only for citizens of the US to compete in. Uh, this year, actually, somebody from, I think it was Sweden, actually won a medal uh, from a beer that was just submitted and shipped overseas, admittedly, to the US for the National Homebrew Competition. So anyone in the world can enter their homebrew, and uh, you might just win something. So really, the only rule is that you have to be a member of the AHA, or the American Homebrewers Association, to enter. But that's it, that's the only stipulation. So about six months out from HomebrewCon, when they have the final round of the NHC, if you're an AHA member, you'll start getting emails about the National Homebrew Competition for that particular year. Basically what happens is you sign up for uh, a number of entries. You sign up and you say, I'm gonna submit this beer, and it's in this kind of style, you will pay an entry fee per entry, so keep that in mind. You don't want to necessarily spend a ton of money just throwing entries in there. You're also not allowed to take a shotgun approach and submit a ton of beer to the same exact category. That's not exactly fair. When you submit these beers, though, if you're going for medals, those medals are going to be taken from the overall BJCP category. So, for example, I submitted an Irish Red Ale. You're not going to get a medal just for Irish Red Ale. You'll be competing against Irish Ales and Scottish Ales because that's category 10. If they do things in the future, like like they did this year, and in my opinion, it's far better than they did last year, um, it's gonna be kind of a two-tiered competition. So what you wanna do is when you get your entries ready for submittal, uh, you're going to package up six beers. The first two are gonna get sent to your local first round judging center. Most entries are gonna be knocked out in that first round, so if you get past the first round, then you'll advance to the final round, which is held at the actual uh, HomebrewCon event. So your final round submission is gonna be three beers. The reason why I say six is so that you can do what I'm doing and you can have a beer left over at the very end to compare against your score sheets. So I submitted four beers to the competition this year. The videos for every single brew are on my channel, so I'll go ahead and link them in a card notification in the corner if you're curious about looking at the process. Um, and basically, the beers that I submitted were, firstly, the Belgian Pale Ale, which was actually the small beer uh, that came out of my party guile experiment, uh, where I party guiled a double and also made this small beer out of it. The best category that that small beer fit into, I think, was Belgian Pale Ale, even though it was only 2% ABV. Didn't really have high hopes for it uh, doing well, but I was curious to see what the judges thought. The second beer I submitted was my Hazy IPA. Not the Treehouse style IPA, but the one I did prior to that under pressure. Um, and so I was curious to see really what it would look like in, in the extremely competitive category of hazy IPAs. Um, a little bit of a bold move submitting a hazy IPA to the National Homebrew Competition because that's easily one of the most competitive categories after Pilsner. But I was curious, it also was an experiment to see how good my packaging process was because if this beer pours brown or purple, clearly it was oxidizing. The next one I submitted was my Irish Red Ale. I was really, really happy with that beer uh, when I first brewed it. And I had pretty good luck with the Irish Ale category in NHC last year, so I kind of wanted to see if I could uh, keep that trend going. And the final beer I submitted was my American or Robust Porter. Um, so I felt really, really good about that beer. It was a solid, solid brew. And um, I honestly 
felt very, very confident that it was gonna go pretty far in NHC. So I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers right off the bat. You're just gonna have to watch the video and find out how well I did. So the first beer on the list is the Belgian Pale Ale, uh, AKA the small beer from the Party Guile. You can find the video for this beer linked up in the corner. This is uh, not a beer that I have tasted in about six months, so it should be very interesting to see uh, how this has aged. So no idea what to expect. I really have no idea what to expect for all of these, to be honest. A lot of carbonation in that. Oh my God, all right. All right. Well, yeah, that's looking still very clear. Nice kind of dark yellow color, sort of amber, very much the same color and clarity. Head retention looks good, head is the same um, as I remember it. So that's a good sign. Let's go over the comments here. So overall, the beer scored only a 23, which is not a particularly good score. It did not advance out of that first round um, because there were better Belgian ales uh, that beat it out, which is fine because I didn't really expect it to do very much at 2%. The first bit here is looking at aroma. We have grainy, crackery, lacking toasty caramel notes. So herbal hop aroma, and then some lemon and pear esters, which apparently are inappropriate. Also, he says there is a low butyric acid off aroma, which is like, that's a horrible flaw, by the way. Butyric acid, if you haven't watched my off flavors video, is the baby vomit character. It's usually present as a result of an infection, and it is a very strong flavor that requires a very low flavor threshold to detect, um, and it generally will ruin a beer. So that's disturbing. I really hope that that's not in here. To me, overall, this uh, doesn't have that aroma because it would really be pretty apparent if it did and it would be pretty disgusting. So, okay, coming on to appearance. Color is light for the style, uh, inappropriate, yellow gold. Uh, clarity, brilliant, head off-white, moderate thickness. Head retention is basically medium. So for flavor, he says, crackery, grainy, and lacking toasty complex notes. Let's find out. You know, I'd agree with that. Not really the most uh, flavorful beer, I suppose, at this stage. Kind of one dimensional. Uh, so herbal and spicy, I agree with that. Fermentation, low style lemon esters, yep, I agree with that as well. Now, he says again, you're getting that butyric acid rancid off flavor. Let's see if I can find that. There's definitely something a little bit acidic about this. Not getting that much rancid character, but maybe I guess that's something that he's able to taste a lot better than I am. Or maybe it was a one-off can. It's not unpleasant to drink, but it's not really stellar either. Um, I'm not really getting the butyric acid, to be honest, though. I feel like that's a flavor that you just do not forget. Um, once you've had it one time, and I've tasted it one time, it's, it's a memory. Mouthfeel, um, no comments really there. Relatively thin mouthfeel, medium carbonation, no warming, no creaminess, no astringencies, no flaws, that's pretty good. Um, and overall, three out of 10. So not really uh, a high rating on that one. It says, fair Belgian pale ale with some positive characteristics. Present though the butyric off flavor was off-putting and took center stage. Uh, additionally, malt character was light and miss missed some of the deeper toasty and caramel notes. Not really getting butyric acid out of this, so my thoughts are that was probably a one-off can that uh, potentially had an infection, uh, which is not a good thing. So second guy gave this one 25 out of 50. Seemed to prefer the light biscuit notes um, and phenolic spice. It's pretty much the same exact uh, feedback for appearance. Flavor going with biscuit and honey, which I would also agree with. Um, he says, no discernible hop flavor may be masked by the phenols and the honey. And uh, I agree with that as well. I think there's a little bit of herbal character in there, but not too much. Interesting, he might have gotten a different can than the other judge, because there's no mention of any off flavors from acid or infection here. Mouthfeel, a little bit different as well than the other judge. Overall, five out of 10, so there you go. 
Uh, while this leans towards wonderful in the amount of life it has, it is mostly due to the esters producing a good amount of pepperiness. Agreed. The lack of hop flavor and bitterness puts this slightly out of style. Consider hobby scheduled to help me get it more. Again, the guy doesn't know that this is a beer that barely fits into that style. So I was really curious to find out what they thought about it, and um, I think their comments are pretty well uh, in line with my expectations. However, the butyric acid bit, I don't think was present in all of the beers, and I'm not tasting it in this one. Next beer we're gonna talk about is the Hazy IPA that I made under pressure. Once again, video is gonna pop up in the corner if you're curious about the brewing process on this one. Also, when this beer pours, you're gonna tell right away whether or not it's oxidized, so whether it's gold or whether it's brown or purple, it's gonna show what happened in the packaging process. So, here we go. Good hiss, good foam. Hey, look at that! Good color, but wait, it's clear. <laughs> Nice, okay. It's no longer a hazy IPA. So, I mean, there's a slight haze to it, but yeah, that's clearly not a stable haze. So, that's very interesting. That being said though, there are no signs of oxidation. So that's actually pretty cool, uh, considering how sensitive this style is to oxidation. This beer scored 35 overall, which is actually a pretty good score when it comes to a competition, especially when it comes to hazy IPAs. Medium low white bread, white bread crust. Pineapple blueberry with some Meyer lemon notes. And then palm fruit esters with medium low sulfur. Interesting. Definitely getting a lot of fruit. I get the blueberry now. Never thought about it that way. Uh, a creamy white head. Here we don't have any sort of head retention. Um, so that's a very interesting thing to point out here. Um, a very apparent lack of head retention now. He had the opposite experience where the head lasted a long time. So that's. That's interesting. Low pineapple and blueberry, got that. Mango and lemon, got that. Grass, a little bit of that. Sulfur and prominent as the beer warms. Maybe that's what I'm getting as like a bitterness. Doesn't taste like rotten eggs at all. And then he also says the malt note is pleasantly subdued. The sulfury note is back and unpleasant again. Tropical hop notes are pleasant, but clash, I think is what he meant to say. Somewhat with the danker hop notes and sulfur. And I agree with that overall. So mouthfeel here, we have uh, hot burn, apparently, which is interesting. I don't think I'm getting that anymore. Carbonation on the low side, and then otherwise flaws, metallic, low flavor. I think that's also kind of coming from that sulfur character as well. Overall, seven out of 10. He says this beer is rather pleasant. I specifically appreciated tropical hop notes. Unfortunately, the sulfur and dank hop notes detracted somewhat. Moreover, the hop burn really hurt drinkability. I don't know in the future that I would recommend rousing there you go. Okay, that might actually be the source of the hot burn. And I would watch fermentation and yeast temp selection to help avoid some of those sulfury notes. I would also suggest some more characterful base malts to help the malt stand up to the hops slightly more. And honestly, I, I actually agree with all of that feedback pretty much entirely. Um, it's a good note there to say, hey, don't rouse in the future if you don't want hot burn. Um, and I think that's a fair, fair point especially useful tip for those of us who are submitting hazy IPAs. So second judge gave this one 37 out of 50, which is pretty pretty high freaking score um, overall. So that's cool. Medium high resiny hop aroma followed by low grassy aroma. As the beer warms, medium orange citrus aroma. Yep. Pale yellow and killer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over, everything else checks out pretty much. Flavor 12 out of 20. Just gonna kind of scroll past that. I think those are pretty much in line with the others. Um, Body and mouth feel rather light. That more aligns really with what I'm tasting here and the way that this particular can has poured. No flaws, overall seven out of 10, which is pretty cool. Overall, a good hazy IPA that could be improved by adding a bit more body to brew the mouthfeel. And I also completely agree with that. So uh, overall, good response and good feedback. Um, and you know, for my own personal uh, take on this one, clearly it's, dropped a lot of its haze out. And even though I did add a little bit of rousing, I can now see chunks of hops in this, which is not a good thing. And that contributes significantly to that hop burn that the judge uh, number one was talking about. Overall though, the mango fruity character of this, the uh, kind of like the pineapple and the blueberry really do come through very strongly. This is a very fruity uh, beer, even six months later, and uh, has a lot of hop character and a lot of hop expression in it. So that's awesome. Um, I'm really glad to see that it didn't oxidize, but 
there are elements of it that are absolutely missing. It, it is thin feeling in the body. It is missing the haze. It's missing the head. Um, and it misses some life, to be honest. Uh, I could use a lot more uh, malt character in this and a lot more um, kind of brightness, I think. It's just a little boring at this moment. It just, it also doesn't help that this can is warm. Like warm IPAs are just not tasty. So overall, very interesting to see how it aged, but let's move on to the beers that made it past the first round. So the next beer on the list here is one that I'm pretty proud of. That is the Irish Red Ale. Um, again, I'm gonna link that video up in the corner if you wanna watch that brew day. This beer made it past the first round of the National Homebrew Competition, which it also scored a mini best of show bronze in the Irish and Scottish ale category, which is pretty cool. So I came back with a ribbon from the first round, which is another nice thing about the way that this competition was structured this year is you still get something if you do really well, but don't make it all the way to the medals uh, stage of the final round. So let's go ahead, let's pour this and see how it's fared over time. Oh shit. I'm just gonna need to edit that one out. All right, so <laughs> it's a nice clear red color just as I packaged it. Um, got that nice off-white head. Looks like it's kind of going away rather quick though. Because this advanced to the NHC final round, I'm gonna go through two score sheets on this one. So it'll be very abbreviated uh, as we move through, but it'll also tell you the story of how this beer aged. So starting with uh, the first round, scored a 33 out of 50, which is not bad overall, um, but really not exceptional either. So judge number one gave this one a 33 as well. Um, and yeah, we're getting light notes of light caramel and tobacco, um, a low earthy hop note with light herbal notes and then palm fruit and fleshy red apple, which I would agree with. Um, so yeah, amber color, he said there was slight chill haze in it. Um, I'm not getting any chill haze. Thin white, then again, my beer is also very warm. A uh, thin head of fine white bubbles lingers along the edge of the glass, so definitely loses that head retention rather quickly, and that's also what I'm observing here. Uh, for flavor, we have light notes of dark bread crust, otherwise neutral. See up front with a herbal character, medium high hop bitterness, accented by the dryness. Alcohol presence a touch too high for the style. I'm not getting any of that. Hot bitterness dominates against neutral malt palate and a drying flavor profile. I'm definitely getting some hops out of this one. I'm definitely getting that dark bread crust character um, and the hoppiness. The mouthfeel, he goes with medium, with a medium high carbonation, a little bit of warmth. I don't get that. Uh, creaminess, none, stringency none, yeah. So overall not too bad. Overall six out of 10, uh, he says, yeah, we have apple notes and higher alcohol flavors from high temperature, volatile fermentation, keep ale yeast no higher than 68, pitch healthy and sufficient. Yeah, you know what? I did that, so thank you very much. The apple note's definitely there, but the alcohol note is not. That might be a one-off for the particular can that this guy opened. Judge number two gave this also a 33 out of 50. Um, once again, concurred with the apple ester um, and character, which is interesting, and yeah, I'm picking up more of that now. Uh, overall, very similar comments, very similar uh, feedback in general, and uh, yeah, gave this the exact same score. So I really love the malt notes here, they exemplify the stale, really quite good. I agree that mild malt's a fantastic thing to use. Um, fairly intense apple ester, which is something I get from Scottish yeast when I use it. Whatever yeast was used, consider a less characterful one and fermenting it colder. Uh, once again, I use the Irish ale yeast on this guy, which is exactly what you should be using for the style. You wanna go cleaner? Yeah, ferment it colder. I fermented mine pretty low, but maybe next time I will ferment it uh, closer to like 62 and keep it really, really cold. Um, the bitterness can be bumped down and touch more hop character would be welcome and would dry the beer out. So again, another interesting thing to think about is that hop presence was uh, high for one judge and low for another. Overall though, this beer is actually pretty tasty, so I'm gonna go ahead and top that one off and finish it. Let's move on to the final round uh, feedback for the Irish Red. So this one actually, score went down a lot. Um, so <laughs> we're looking at 24.5, which is not a good score um, and is absolutely the reason why I did not medal. We have a lot of feedback saying that this beer oxidized. We have muted malt cardboard, cherry cola, and papery flavor and I 100% agree with him. 
So, yeah, this beer didn't fare too well in the can, clearly. Um, the oxidation hasn't hurt this style as much as it hurts others, but it is apparent enough to be detectable, and that is a flaw when you're trying to compete at the national level. Again, lack of hop character. Uh, we have low diacetyl and plum. I get the plum. Maybe I get the diacetyl. I guess maybe if you're really hunting for it, but that is their job. And an odd chlorine plastic note lurking in the background. I think you're just tasting roast, my guy. Color and appearance, pretty much exactly the same as before. Flavor, he did not like this one, obviously, because there's oxidation character to it. You know, you can't really uh, get around that. So yeah, medium, slightly low oxidized, harsh and bitter. Um, harsh is an excessive term to use. <laughs> I'm a little bit defensive of my beer when he says harsh. I don't think it's harsh. It says acetaldehyde, probably present from oxidation, not from original fermentation. Um, touch of residual sweetness. And uh, definitely agree with that. The sweetness is amplified when you have that oxidation character. So that's definitely something I would not be surprised to see. And then yeah, marked a lot of flaws on this one. So it didn't age well. Overall feedback, would have loved to have this beer fresh. The bones seem good. Unfortunately, the beer arrived to us pretty heavily oxidized. Watch your packaging transfer for O2 pickup. Re-examine how you're canning. These session beers are delicate, especially with shipping and all that. Cannot agree more. I'm telling you, shipping and packaging is a make or break for NHC. Uh, so judge number two gave this one 24 out of 50. Uh, cola on the nose. Right off the top, this came out with cola, like we oxidized, yeah. No other really disagreements with the first judge here. It all really is pretty much the same feedback. I think this was a very good beer that got damaged in packaging and was relatively oxidized. This really impacted the flavor and aroma significantly. I'd like to try this one fresh though, thanks. You're welcome, um, I'll do better next time. So for my own feedback, I completely agree with the judges on this one. The beer looks beautiful. Um, the head retention is dropped again, probably due to the oxidation. But yeah, there's an obvious oxidation character to this. It is uh, very one dimensional. These beers tend to do better when they're warmer and it's not really helping this one. It comes through with that classic cardboard character and the kind of like artificially sweet sherry notes that you get from oxidation. It's kind of a damn shame too, because my hazy IPA was not oxidized, but this one got oxidized. And I'm like, come on, man. Overall though, the bones of it, as the first guy said, are good. You can tell it once was a good beer. It's got some really rich maltiness to it that would have come out more. The hop characteristic that I first had uh, when I first tasted this beer is gone. Um, it's a shame to see that it has gotten to this point, but it's still not horrible. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one. Okay, and now it's time for the final beer that I submitted, the American Porter. So you'll find again the video for this one linked up in the corner. So of the four beers that I submitted to the competition, this one easily did the best. Uh, so it actually advanced out of that first round, winning a silver mini best of show uh, in the category of American Porter and Stout. So that's a pretty cool thing, and I'm very proud of that fact. It unfortunately did not go on to medal at the final round. It did not advance out of the, uh, the first table. So once again, we'll be going over two score sheets here, one from the first round and one from the final round, and uh, we'll dive into it. So without further ado, the final beer, the American Porter. That's a lot of carbonation. Actually, I've done the best job pouring this one so far, so <laughs> that's nice. And because it's the final one, I think I'm just gonna pour the whole glass. Head is fading real quick on this guy. All right, wow. And here we are. Nice jet black color, dark brown maybe, dark brown head. All right, so when it went through the first round, it got a score of 34, which is pretty good overall. Um, again, not really amazing, but pretty good. So first guy gave this one 33 out of 50. Uh, we have toasted bread, low cocoa note, low black coffee, low earthy hop aroma, and clean fermentation. Otherwise, low oxidation aroma, and other aromas are quite subdued overall. Agree with the aroma being subdued. Wow, I don't get much of anything. Okay. 
Moderate tan foam forms the tiny bubbles but dissipates quickly. Agree, that's exactly what happened here. So for flavor, heavily toasted bread, low baker chocolate, low black coffee, low dried dark fruits, earthy woody hop flavor but quite low. Medium and low bitterness is low for this style. This is a robust porter, it's supposed to be bitter and hoppy. Fermentation is very clean, malt dominates the balance here. A bit more malt contribution would be welcome. Wow, that's changed a lot since I last had it. That's a shame. That's not nearly as good as it used to be. So for flavor, I really do agree with everything he said here. Um, I can pick up on every flavor he pointed out, except for the fact that there is now a very strong oxidation character in this. Overall, five out of 10. He says, this is a tasty beer, nice work, a bit more roasted character, hop bitterness, and hop expression would all be welcome to boost the intensity of the beer. As it currently sits, the balance here seems more reminiscent of an English porter because I used the English yeast, right? Not the American yeast, which would have gotten out of the way, allowed those hops to express themselves more, and also would have increased the amount of roastiness and astringency that you would get from that roastiness. Um, so 100% agree with that feedback. Still a tasty beer that I would imagine to be a very easy drinking pint. Yeah, when I made this beer, it really fits in between English Porter and American Porter because it's not as hoppy and as bitter and as intense as an American Porter, but it's also not as light, smooth, and chocolatey as an English Porter. It's somewhere in the middle. I did not expect it to do as well as it did in this particular category, though. There's definitely something to be said about using that yeast anyway, but that's a, that's a whole other conversation. So judge number two gave this a 35 out of 50. Um, giving it 9 out of 12 on aroma, medium cocoa, medium bittersweet chocolate, low nuttiness, low floral hops, agreed. Flavor, 12 out of 20, medium roast, medium low bitter chocolate, low coffee, light in intensity, but short of burnt okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything here is exactly the same, I would say, as the first judge. Kind of a similar uh, theme here overall. Overall, 7 out of 10. Delicious beer. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Uh, to improve your score, feel free to increase the complexity of the malt bill for a greater variety of flavors. Increase the carbonation slightly to improve head retention. Also consider some high protein malts and can increase the hop character. Definitely increase bittering hops. And so yeah, overall I completely agree with that. You, when you're talking about American Porter, you absolutely need to have a strong bittering character in there. I think I had that at the beginning, but it needs to have a little bit more punch to it to score higher in terms of the style. I would also, yeah, I'd throw in a little bit of like flaked barley or something in there to really get that mouthfeel bumped up. So moving on to the final round scores, 34. Uh, it's the exact same number as that was in the first round. So that's pretty cool. So first guy gave this a 35, saying medium high fruity ester with low tartness perceived. Appearance is in line with the other judges from before. Moving on to flavor, 14 out of 20. We get some apple character, which is interesting. This is now more in line with what I'm tasting right now. Lasting earthy black dirt hop flavor. Also getting that. Not sure about dirt, but definitely earthy. Um, and then, yeah, medium apple flesh fruitiness with low lactic acidity. So lactic is a very interesting thing to say about this beer. Um, not something that was present in the first round comments at all. So let's see if it's still in here. There is an acidic uh, character to this. Um, wouldn't say that it's sour or even to that level of being able to identify it as lactic acid, but there is an acidity to this. It does say it's sour and acidic. I, again, I think that's kind of like a background note and aftertaste might be a, a manifestation of the roasted character. It, it has an acidic character and I do agree with them, unfortunately. It's not straight up in your face acidity though, so you really have to hunt for it. So overall feedback, ferment cold and slow to lower any dominating esters, as always, yes. I did that. Adjust the hop and specialty malt to adjust burnt acrid flavor and added acidity. He does actually imply the acidity there is coming from the roasted malt. So the second judge here gave us a 33 out of 50. The overall aroma uh, seemed to be pretty solid for him. Overall, no, no off aromas, good malt presence. Uh, color in line with the other guys. Um, flavor, 13 out of 20. Not as biscuity as it smells, that's interesting. Finish and aftertaste, it is dry with lingering roast. That is 100% correct. So <laughs> the bitterness in this particular example comes more from the dryness and the roast than it does from hops. He says there's something in the finish that's slightly tart, perhaps lactic. Mouthfeel, three out of five. Slightly astringent. That astringency, I think, has been ex 
kind of uh, amplified by some probable oxidation. Overall, six out of 10, lacking the bitterness and hoppiness. Uh, fairly clean beer, thin and dry as a lingering tartness or astringency that is not particularly pleasant. So there you have it. That's everything from the judges. So now for my final feedback on this beer, there is a slight acidity and tartness to the back of the palate when you drink this beer. I think it's from the roast. It does not help that this beer finished dry or feels like it finished dry. So overall, I'm actually pretty happy with how my beers did in the grand scheme of things. No, they didn't go on to win any medals beyond the first round, but they were overall competitive. The main culprit here, the main problem is oxidation, and I can taste it in this particular beer. If you knew what this beer tasted like, and you tasted it before it's in its current form, you would have absolutely nailed this thing with oxidation. It is such a diminished character compared to the way it used to taste. And that's really kind of a sad thing because this is easily the best porter I've ever made. Um, and the beer off of the keg was fantastic the entire time that it was in the keg. And that's obvious because kegging is, is really hard to oxidize. There's actually a lot of time that passes in between choosing to actually enter the competition and committing to your submissions and actually sending them in and judging them and finally getting your scores back. About six months actually is how long it takes. So what I have learned really overall in this process is that packaging is really what is gonna make or break your submissions. You absolutely need to make sure that you're not getting any sort of oxygen or infections into your beer uh, as you are packaging it because even if it's good for the first round, it may not be good by the time it makes it to the final round. Case in point, there's a party called the Knockout Party at HomebrewCon. It's the final thing you'll ever do at HomebrewCon uh, under the AHA banner. And basically it happens directly after the NHC awards ceremony. And you're trying all of the beer that did not make it through the final round of NHC. They just bring the bottles and cans out, put them on ice and uh, let you kind of go at it. So you're tasting everyone's homebrew that made it through the first round. Let me tell you though, three out of every four beers that I tried uh, in the knockout party had very, very obvious flaws in them. Things like diacetyl and oxidation and inappropriate sourness. And it goes to show that packaging makes or breaks your submissions because these beers clearly got through the first round which means that they beat out many, many more uh, contestants homebrew, and there's absolutely no way that they tasted the way they did at the first round. Last year, my submissions were very heavy in the Belgian category, so I actually bottle conditioned most of my beer submissions, and pretty much all of those were given bad marks for being inconsistent in carbonation, or having oxidation. The one beer that did metal was actually counter pressure bottle filled off of the tap. So I figured that I would actually just fill all of my beers off the keg this year as a result of that. And uh, I made the decision to submit cans this year instead of bottles because last year I paid a pretty penny for shipping just due to the weight of bottles. To fill cans, um, there are counter pressure can fillers out there, they do exist. Um, I don't own one and I don't really have a desire to own one because I don't really have a need other than this competition for canned beer to last a long time. That being said, I did use a tap cooler to fill the cans and that is more than enough to get the job done because filling cans really is a matter of purging the can from the bottom up with CO2, which you do with the tap cooler, and then just filling it and capping on foam. And I did that for all of my submissions. The idea behind this is that you minimize headspace and that foam is all CO2, not oxygen, so you really don't have any oxygen pickup when you can this way. That being said, still was oxygen that made it into the beer somehow, so uh, evidently that it was not the case. I think next year I'm just gonna have to eat the cost and counter pressure bottle fill. There's less surface area exposed to the headspace in a bottle versus a can, and there's less headspace volume in general, I think, in a bottle as opposed to a can. Combine that with the ability of the tap cooler to actually counter pressure bottle fill. You get to keep your carbonation in there as well. I think it's kind of a no brainer. This is just how we're gonna have to do it in the future. Even though I didn't win a medal, it was still a fantastic experience to be a part of the whole thing and uh, really connects you to the, the phenomenal community that we are a part of as old brewers. There's actually a lot of people I know that have entered the competition for the first time ever and walked out with medals. So really honestly, if you haven't tried it before and you want to, you're just kind of intimidated by the whole national level thing, don't be, enter your beer and find out how it goes because you might actually meddle.
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you appreciated the honesty that I dropped here today. Uh, packaging is gonna make or break your beer, and the once great beers that I had uh, died in the can. So um, this one kind of goes out to them. May they rest in peace. But otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something. And if you did, please go ahead, hit the like button and subscribe for more future content like this. Don't be afraid to comment down in the comment section. There's a lot of wisdom there, so and I'm sure there's a lot of good feedback and a lot of good advice that's gonna be dropped down in the comment section for this particular video. So pay attention if you're out there and you wanna compete. If you wanna support the channel, there's a number of great ways to do so. Um, I would really appreciate it if you picked up a t-shirt like this one. Uh, wear it to HomebrewCon next year because I might run into you and I might see you in the t-shirt and if I do, I am gonna walk up to you and tell you that I appreciate you. It means a lot to me, honestly, and that way you get something out of the deal uh, for supporting me. There's also a Patreon, and my Patreon supporters are fantastic people. They have been so instrumental in supporting this channel, upgrading its production over the last year, and just doing so much more. So I appreciate you guys so much. Check it out, it's in the description. You get a lot of benefits for checking out the Patreon. There's also channel memberships, and there's the super thanks button. If you feel inclined to hit either of those things, I appreciate it a lot, it means a lot to me. And there's also an Amazon store where you can find all my brewing equipment, my filming equipment, everything that I use to make this channel uh, do its thing is on that Amazon store. So check that out if you got some time. I am also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer, where you'll find a lot of frequent content updates um, that are gonna intersperse themselves between videos. So if you wanna find out what's going on in the future, go check that channel out. And if you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, I really appreciate you sticking around because these videos take a long time to produce. I'm generally averaging between 20 and 30 hours of video production per video, um, so it does feel kind of like a part-time job. So I appreciate it if you guys watch the whole thing. It means everything to me. And so, if you're still here, and especially if you competed in this year's National Homebrew Competition or you're competing next year or thinking about it, this one goes out to you guys, and I wish you all the best of luck. So until the next one, cheers.